So what you see running behind you is the work of Pool Arts, um, which is, they describe themselves as a work of art in their own right, but a sort of membership-driven organisation. Uh, they currently have just under 20 members who run and control the organisation, some staying for uh, months or years. Um, so it's, it's constantly evolving, and they're going to talk about um, their work with, well, the shed is one possibility for residency, but all sorts of other work. So I think am I handing over to Alison first? Is that right? To Dave first. Excellent. Over to Dave. Thanks. Uh, Pool Arts is an arts organisation providing opportunities and a peer network of support for artists who might otherwise find it difficult to get involved in Manchester's art scene. Run by and for its members, it is also a charity and a registered company. It is funded by small grants and donations and membership fees. As you've already heard, my name is Dave and I am a member of Pool Arts. And in 2004 we were invited the Garden of Delights uh, Summer Festival, which is a festival which was held in Platfields Park, and we hadn't really got any idea what we wanted to do there, apart from it needs to be an exhibition. How would you hold an exhibition in a park? Well, we decided we'd buy a shed. What else could you do in a park but buy a shed and turn it into a gallery where 10 artists exhibited over two days. And that basically meant that we had 10 artists, one hour each, exhibit your work, and then one hour at the changeover, someone else would, would go in and exhibit their work. Um, basically that was so that we could, we, we could make work, learn how to do the publicity and promotion, uh, the practicalities of doing this, learn about health and safety, um, learn about feedback and evaluation, so how to have evaluation sheets, which are these things you can see in the door. Those are uh, feedback from members of the public. It was also filmed via CCTV, as you saw before. And um, that which, which actually went on, on to be uh, shown at the Corn House on the big screen. Um. Yeah, just a, there's a few more images here as well from that initial thing. So that was in 2004. Um, we built it as the smallest gallery in the world and um, that it was an art gallery that wasn't boring and it only took a short while to look round. Um, so we were kind of a little bit tongue-in-cheek about the whole thing. We had a shop selling t-shirts and um, bits of memorabilia and postcards um, and we the, the shop was, you know, a lot bigger than the shed and we, we thought that was kind of similar to some of the galleries now where the commercial aspect of the gallery takes over. Um, so we were invited back the following year and we decided to do a group project this time. So instead of having ten exhibitions in two days, we just worked on one exhibition. It was called International Pound World um, and we looked at the idea of pound shops, which are all, all pervasive, they're everywhere, and the artists were given the brief to use materials or objects or the theme of pound shops and create works for the, the little shed gallery. <clears throat> um, again, really successful and a lot of fun um, and a lot of learning involved in put, putting the exhibition together. Um, one of the things Dave didn't mention was that everybody had to publicise their own mini exhibition. So a big part of it was running around the festival, inviting people to the opening of their exhibition, which lasted for the whole duration of their exhibition. So each, each artist had their own opening. Um, so a lot of interacting with the public. Um, talking to people about the work, talking to people about pool arts, and, and we got a lot of publicity in that way. Word of mouth, we, we rely on a lot uh, to get the word out about pool arts. So obviously in between the festivals, uh, we had to store this shed, take it to pieces, find somewhere where we could keep it, because pool arts doesn't have a permanent uh, studio, certainly didn't then. Um, and 
This is just showing how you can use the shed because we're here to promote the shed as a residency space. Um, so you can use the outside, the inside, the roof, uh, the surrounding area. Um, but it did become, it was quite a logistical thing because we had to get somebody to help put the shed together, to transport it, and it, that can all have quite a lot of expense tied to it. Um, this is Gerald Kaufman visiting the shed. Um, lots of children really loved it. We we tried to come up with innovative ways of getting evaluation and feedback because whenever you get a grant, you have to kind of show what you did and how much people enjoyed it. So we got all these from the pound shop, which is a great resource. That's I'm sure everybody knows as an artist that the pound shop is your best resource for arts materials. These um, glow-in-the-dark um, uh, price tags and things that are blank. And so we just got people to write down what they liked about the shed um, and make their own badges and recorded it that way. Children absolutely loved it. And then, yeah, Dave. Thank you. Uh, then in 2006, it was moved to its now permanent home at the Tunbridge Road uh, Community Allotment in Royal Avenue, where anyone can apply to have a residency inside the shed. Um, we've had, we had one, no, we have the, uh, yep, the jumper, <laughs> where a group of knitters knitted a jumper to fit over the shed. Kind of an amazing, amazing day with the shed, really. Yeah. yeah, so this was Art Yarns, which is, uh, or was, I don't know if they're still together, Sarah Hardacre and da, 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 Ellis, somebody Ellis, Sarah Ellis, I think, um, who run Art Yarns, and they're uh, kind of like street art using knitting, so they do yarn bombing, and uh, it was really popular for a while, and uh, yeah, they they ran some workshops uh, for the community and everybody knitted squares and they sewed them all together and created a jumper. The show was in December, it was extremely cold. Um, we don't have any heating, we don't have any real lighting, although we have got a little generator that you can use for, for an opening event. You can see how cold it is. It was quite a nice, a beautiful thing, I thought, what they did. Uh, another residency was the Platt Lane Art Group, which is a group of artists um, with learning difficulties and um, supported by artist Gemma Lacey. And their exhibition was called A Place to Escape. And they made uh, lots of little pieces of artwork and had a lovely opening. And they had this really nice little birdhouse, which was small version of the shed outside. The community allotment, we don't take any part in the growing or planting or anything like that, we just have the shed, but the allotment society um, run the community allotment and they've done a lot of, a lot of fundraising recently and they now have um, a kitchen and a barbecue and a pizza oven and so they regularly hold events a couple of times a year, two, three times a year, uh, depending on how their committee is going. Um, and they invite us to have exhibitions to coincide. So we try and work together with them a little bit. Um, but I guess in the last few years, we've not done as many exhibitions just because we've been busy doing other things, um, running exhibitions in, in, in other galleries around Manchester. But we do still have the shed, so we um, occasionally uh, members of Pool Arts or anybody can apply to use the shed to create an exhibition, have a little bit of time spent work there, do a workshop, anything really. Um, we don't offer very much support, I'm afraid, but we can help to publicise and give you access to the space. Uh, this exhibition was one of our members, Eddie Price, aka Opitz, and this is his homage to Kurt Schwitters. Uh, based on the Mertz barn, and so this exhibition was called Mertz Shed. Another of our artists, Tess Lomas, created a sound piece. So very simple um, in terms of staging it. 
Uh, it was a sound piece and she used a cassette recorder with a loop tape and it's called For Those in Peril at the Sea. So I think everybody loves going inside a shed because it's very intimate. It has all kind of resonant memories for people. Um, and this was quite um, an, an evocative piece. Um, another of our artists, Annette Ebanks, who created a, an exhibition called Flower Power, which was a launch of a book that she'd created. Um, this is Annette standing outside the shed. People looking at her book. and lots of visitors. Barbecue. It's just a really nice atmosphere there. Um, in no, year 2011, we had Merch Shed 2 as part of the uh, citywide exhibition organised by Littoral, uh, the Arts Trust, based up in Cumbria, who look after the Kirchwitters Merch Barn. And this, it was called Merck's Man, and uh, all the main galleries were involved in some way uh, with some reference to Kirchwitter's work in Manchester and in Cumbria. Um, so we decided to do Merck's Shed 2, and two artists, again, Eddie Price showed his original work, uh, plus some extra bits, um, and then Harry Matthews, or Hasman, who's another of our artists. By now we had a permanent studio, which was fantastic, over at Hope Mill. Um, we don't have it anymore, but we had it for a glorious three years. And um, this is Harry working on his work uh, in uh, another uh, homage to Kirchfitters. By now the allotment is looking a little bit more organized with planters. So again, Eddie's work was out on the fences. We had a um, welcome reception area with another of our artists, at Alan. And this is the work that was then installed um, into the shed that Harry created. More visitors from Manchester, Kwong Lee, and Richard DiMarco, who's a very famous curator who was visiting uh, Littoral for the Mertzman exhibition. And he famously is quoted as saying that the Shed Gallery was the best gallery he'd ever seen. And he said every neighbourhood should have a Shed Gallery. Okay, so I think we've been quite short and sweet, keeping to time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you very much. And if anybody's got any questions you want to ask, just please do. Well, thank you. <laughs> this um, is so it's super cheap. The shed. Yeah, um, we don't offer any fees for residencies, um, but we can help with any promotion, advertising, a bit of support. Can you in there? And there's a question at the back. Do you want that? Mike? Um, that's okay. Oh, go on now, yeah. <laughs> um, I was just wondering if you have a base at the moment and kind of what your plans are as a group for the future. We don't have a base at the very moment, yeah. but we've been involved with the Castlefield New Art Spaces. So we had um, a lovely space in Federation House. Um, basically, the way it went was uh, one of the aims of Pool Arts when it was set up was to provide studio space uh, for artists who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford to have a studio. And um, so it was a long-term goal and we spent a long time getting the organisation into a fit state to be able to apply for the kind of money that we needed to fully subsidise the studio. And we achieved that in 2009 to 2012 with a lovely purpose-built studio. And unfortunately the financial crash happened so our funder completely changed their priority in what they would fund and um, arts and mental health became kind of secondary to just feeding people. So uh, we, we had to kind of pull out. Castlefield offered us space in the new art spaces at Federation House and then subsequently when that closed down another space over in Chalton. 
Um, but we've found that it's it's great having that space, which is more or less free. Um, but it's quite disruptive for people's work when you don't know at any moment are you going to lose that space, which everybody knows as an artist. So we're trying now another model and we're looking at a space which will be fantastic, but we're going to invite associate artists who can afford to pay um, to take self-contained space within the studio and then the rest of the space will be free for Bull Arts members to use. So we're hoping to have a space at some point in the next year. Any more, any more questions? My question is rather stupid one, so I'm a bit embarrassed, but is, does putting a jumper on a shed make it warmer? <laughs> no. <laughs> right, okay. So it's not like a tea cozy, no. No. <laughs> any more questions for Paul? I mean, I guess uh, the thing that you've got that's really interesting is this really collaborative approach. Um, so, and I guess you then have to have ways of dealing with times when more you know there's there's competition for resources and so on or does it all tend to work quite well you must have we we get a lot of support pool arts i i actually work for an organization called saint luke's art project um over in Longsight, and uh, we've always provided the base the office base uh, and a place to meet um, and my me as a resource in terms of helping to support the administration and fundraising and a bit of creative direction and just, just generally collaborating with everybody. Um, so that's been, you know, a real um, support in kind coming in from St. Luke's. Um, but pool arts, uh, everybody pays a small amount to kind of cheap, just keep the charity turning over. Um, and then it's small grants and yeah, it's competition and it's, everybody knows if you're in a small organisation you're constantly fundraising, That's, that takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, so yeah, we're always hand to mouth unfortunately. <laughs>